Hi, I'm Chef Tom with another edition of Tom's Table. We're in Villa Park at Cornerstone Books. Kathy Carwell is a good friend of ours. She found a book from 1965. It's called A Treasury of Great Recipes by Vincent and Mary Price. You know, yeah, really, that Vincent Price, that 1960s horror icon, he was in just about every scary movie there was. What we want to do is take some of the recipes out of that book and uh, bring them up to 2015. As a chef, we're always looking for inspiration, and, and this book might just do it. It might just uh, trigger something creative. Cornerstone Books is a locally owned Villa Park treasure on St. Charles Road. Uh, it has thousands of titles, plus a large selection of classic vinyl. Their stock is constantly updated, and you will never know what you will find. Hi, Janine. Hi, Tim. How are yeah. you? Hi, how are you? Good to see you. We hear you found something very special. We did. I was so excited. Oh. I know this book. I've heard of this book. I've read this book. I know you've been looking for it for a while. I have. I have. Uh, Treasury of Great Recipes, Vincent and Mary Price. I looked through it. The recipes look great. What are you going to try first? Well, we're going to take some of the classic dishes out of there, uh, very classic dishes in this book, and we're going to try to modernize them. We're going to try to bring them up to 2050. 50 years later, we're going to, we're going to take these recipes and make them ours. Well, let me know what you cook next time you come in. Let me know how it turns well, out. I'm sure it'll be great as always. It's ours. It's ours now. Okay. Okay. One book. Let me ring you up. Thank you. We have found a treasure at Cornerstone Books. Uh, Kathy, I can't even believe the luck we had in finding our Vincent Price 1965 book, A Treasury of Great Recipes. One of the things about this book that it's become quite rare, uh, a couple recipes just jumped out at me as I was uh, looking through the book. And one is a very classic French dish, uh, steak au poivre. The classic way to prepare that is you take your filet and you pound peppercorns into it. We're going to make a nice green peppercorn sauce to go over that filet mignon. For dessert, bread pudding. Cheap, easy to prepare, but yet very elegant. I'm going to make a pumpkin rum raisin sauce for the uh, bread pudding. That's kind of what cuisine is all about, is that uh, it's all based on sauces. Cuisine is based on sauces. So, uh, even though we've got our main elements, our bread pudding, we've got our steak, we're gonna take them up a level and prepare a nice sauce for both of those. Along with our uh, uh, steak au poivre with a brandy peppercorn sauce, we're gonna do a cream spinach. Every steakhouse in the world, you see a fine steak, you've got cream spinach to go with that. So we'll show you how to do that. Uh, texture, a uh, nice crunch we need. So we're gonna do a nice home fry, very cheap to prepare. We've been very uh, frugal on Tom's table about how we uh, uh, cook. And we're gonna do that uh, and that's gonna be our menu. All right, we have our book, we have our menu. Let's start preparing. Uh, the first thing we'll do, which has to cook the longest, is our bread pudding. So, let's start with the dessert. Uh, we'll get the bread pudding out of the way and then we'll move on to the uh, pumpkin rum raisin sauce. A pound and a half of bread that uh, I bought yesterday and it, it hurt my stomach to sit there and let it go stale, but that's what you need for bread pudding. Five eggs, we're gonna use uh, three whole eggs, two egg yolks. Uh, we've got some white chocolate, sugar, cinnamon. It's all going to be our, uh, basically a uh, bread pudding is bread into a creme brulee because you've got heavy cream and you've got eggs, which is the uh, standard for creme brulee. So creme brulee with the addition of a few things. And uh, we've made uh, creme brulee on Tom's table before. All right, we're going to start with uh, eggs. Um, three whole eggs. 
and uh, two just yolks. Okay, we'll separate them this way. Um, Vincent Price was a world traveler. And uh, one thing I was reading about his bread pudding recipe was that when he was done with all his travels to Europe or all over the country where his uh, movie career took him, he uh, desired the simplicity of bread pudding. He came home and uh, one of his go-tos was bread pudding. So uh, I find that kind of cool. And uh, his was very plain. Ours were uh, taking up a notch. So uh, a quart of heavy cream. To that, we're gonna add uh, our three ounces of uh, shaved white chocolate. That's just gonna go in there, that's gonna melt instantly because I put a fine shave on it. And that is just gonna add another level of flavor to the bread pudding, okay? So we'll mix that. Actually, that's dissolved right now like a glass of uh, whatever. So we've got our cream, we've got our eggs, our creme brulee ingredients. We've added some white chocolate to the cream. We're gonna add 10 ounces of just plain white granulated sugar, okay? And we're gonna add that to the heavy cream as well. Let that get all nice. We're gonna take our eggs and beat them a little bit. And with that, with that hot cream, it's actually not boiling or, or scalded, but it's quite warm. So what we kinda wanna do is, is temper this so the eggs don't cook right away. So we'll take a little of the cream mixture and add it to that. And that actually will take the egg yolks or take the eggs to the temperature of the cream and they won't, there won't be any chance of having scrambled eggs in here, okay? So just a little bit of tempering is all we need because that cream's not really so, so hot. So that'll go right back into our cream mixture. And this is what's gonna tie all that um, bread together. It's gonna set like a custard and it's gonna be uh, awesome. So we wanna add a little bit more flavor elements to our dish here. So we take a little bit of vanilla to that. Just a sploosh. I like to, I'm not a big measurer. I like to do it by eye. Uh, touch of cinnamon. Add that to there too. And there. A lot of flavor in there. Plus I thought the cinnamon and the bread pudding would uh, pumpkins and cinnamon go together. So with our pumpkin rum raisin sauce, that cinnamon from the bread pudding is gonna tie in with that pumpkin and it's gonna be uh, a real nice uh, combination. So we've got our bread. And we're just gonna add our custard to that bread, okay? And mix it all together. And what we're gonna do after this bakes is, uh, it's all about, you, you so eat with your eyes. So we're gonna take this and uh, uh, after we bake it in this pan, we're gonna, we've got round ring molds. We're gonna cut out round circles of uh, the bread pudding and it will be an excellent presentation. And um, we talk about uh, bread pudding. We were out at a uh, function the other night at uh, uh, Elgin Community College and uh, th we had dinner there before a concert and what was the dessert? Bread pudding. So see, uh, even in a culinary uh, atmosphere, uh, bread pudding is still very uh, hot hot item to serve, you know? And, and it probably is half, half because how uh, uh, cheap it is to make. I mean, a couple loaves of French bread were like a buck and a half each. So I got like three bucks of French bread, five eggs, six eggs. And uh, yeah, very cheap to make. So we want all the bread, we're gonna do this nice and gently to make sure all the bread gets coated. Okay. We're gonna take A little bit of butter, got a quarter stick of butter, a little bit for the pan, okay? And then we're gonna take the rest and throw it right into the um, mix. All right, so got my buttered pan. Spread that butter around a little bit, okay? Add your bread.
These Pyrex pans work really well, nice and heavy. And actually we can feed a lot of people with this. So, we're gonna smoosh that down in there. Now this is gonna go into the oven at 350 for 45 minutes. The top will get nice and golden brown and that custard is gonna get set and I'm telling you, and, 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 and again, one of the, uh, in the Vincent Price book, uh, the bread pudding itself had raisins in the bread pudding. Um, we're doing the raisins for a sauce with the pumpkin rum raisin sauce. So yes, raisins are in there, but in a different form. Like I said, we're taking uh, a recipe from 50 years ago. Well, actually the recipe was <laughs> well more than 50 years ago, but this is Vincent's uh, recipe from 50 years ago and we're taking it, uh, we're making it current. So we're done with this. We're gonna put it in the oven for 45 minutes at 350 yes, degrees. We have genius of Edgar Allan Poe could knit them so closely together. The burning passions of the purest of loves. The deadly passions of the madly prurient. Madeline, you're leaving this house with me tomorrow. Only I could. For hundreds of years, evil thoughts and evil deeds have been committed within these walls. The house itself is evil now. Here they all are. Ushers. This is monstrous. It waits for me, because very soon I shall be dead. Oh, Madeline, come away with me now. <laughs> Where is she? You buried your own sister alive? I did. But she's dead now. The master hand of the macabre creates its masterpiece. of the bread pudding, the pumpkin rum raisin sauce. I have two ounces of rum, dark rum, and four ounces of seedless raisins. Boom. We're gonna let those macerate in there a little bit just so the raisins get a little soft, and that's gonna go into our sauce. Macerate is means that the uh, hard raisin will absorb all that all that rum and uh, actually you'll get a when you bite into that raisin you'll taste the rum because that's going to absorb all that and it's going to get the raisins nice and soft as well. The longer you do it of course the more intense the flavor will get but uh, to achieve the purpose we want it'll be fine for about 10 minutes. All right we're going to let those macerate. We're going to take our pumpkin which is going to finish the product. I have a uh, uh, quarter cup of butter half a cup of butter, and I'm gonna add the brown sugar to it. And let that cream up real nice. And uh, here also I have a, uh, for the sauce, I have a, a one cup of heavy cream that I'm bringing, uh, just warming it, okay? Uh, that's warm enough, we're gonna turn it off. We're gonna let that cream a little bit. And once that brown sugar uh, absorbs all that butter, uh, we'll add the cream, we add the pumpkin, 
we add the raisins and the brandy and that sauce is done. Uh, we'll keep that at room temperature and after the bread pudding's down on our plate, we just spoon that over and <laughs> I'm telling you, you're, you're gonna be amazed at how good it really tastes. So, And we'll add our hot cream, warm cream to that. Now we've got our eight ounces of just pure organic pumpkin. Easy. We're gonna add that right to the mix. Okay. This is actually gonna thicken it really nicely. Now how simple of a sauce is that? You got cream, you got butter, you've got brown sugar, pumpkin, and we're gonna take our macerated raisins and brandy and we're gonna add that to there as well. Sauce is done. I talk about Vincent Price's book. Uh, as I was reading it, I found one of the uh, big joys they got. Yes, they were Hollywood, but they never went Hollywood. They were very engaging people. When they went to the Price's house for a dinner, it was a, it was an experience, and there was a, it was filled with joy. And uh, that's what we want to achieve on Tom's table: uh, that feeling of joy, that feeling of uh, of uh, excitement, if you will. So, uh, our pumpkin rum raisin sauce is done. It doesn't even have to do anything now. It'll sit uh, at room temperature until it's time to uh, plate. So we'll see you in a couple minutes and we'll start on our other dishes. We talked about textures uh, throughout this meal. And this is gonna be the one that provides the crunch. Uh, you could get elegant, but uh, nothing tastes better to me than a good uh, home fry. Uh, I got red potatoes, onions, a little seasoned salt, salt and pepper, brown them in oil. Uh, some people pre-cook, parboil your red potatoes. I find uh, that just adding them to hot oil and letting them cook a little bit longer, you'll still get that really crunch on the outside and you'll still get the creaminess of the potato on the inside. So uh, very simple dish to prepare. Uh, you figure you gotta, you gotta have about a half hour to 40 minutes to prepare this one because the potatoes take a while to cook. So we're gonna chop up some onions and potatoes. Oh my gosh, the importance of sharp knives. I'm kind of a fanatic about my knives. A sharp knife, see how, how easily that glides through and the key to a, chopping an onion is just going through like this. And you see how smooth that glides through? If I had a dull knife, that would drag and I'd be at more of a chance to, to cut myself. And uh, we've talked about that old knife sharpener that comes up and down the streets with his little wagon. I've been using him for 15 years or 20 years it's totally worth it to spend the money on a good knife. I've had these for a good 20 years and uh, all you do is sharpen them and you're in good shape. So, Potatoes. I use reds because they hold up better in a hash brown. And we don't have to be perfect on these at all. We want a, a smaller dice so it cooks faster. The dessert is ready. Uh, the bread pudding, like I said, it cooked about 45 minutes. Let's pull it out and see what we got. There you go. Look at how nice and brown that got, and it's all set on the inside. Uh, what we'll do when we serve it is take a ring mold, take a nice, you want height in dining, and you see how nice and high that got? So that's gonna, that's gonna present well on our dish, and uh, we're gonna spoon the sauce right over that, a little Chantilly cream and a mint leaf, and we're good to go. All right, we've got our potatoes and onions right into the pan with them, okay? Waste nothing. You went to the effort to chop it, use it, all right, we're just gonna salt and pepper these liberally, okay? Plenty of seeds, plenty of kosher salt, and fresh cracked black pepper. Add it, add a lot. We're done with this part of this meal now. We just gotta let those cook, so we'll move on to cream spinach. Two pounds of spinach. Steamed it, chopped it, got all the water out of there, okay? Six shallots. Uh, in Vincent Price's cookbook, again, uh, they were asking one of the chefs what his secret was to uh, fine cooking. And he said, whenever uh, there's the option to use onion or garlic, choose a shallot. We're choosing shallots. Uh, so the main thing with cream spinach, uh, very authentic in every steakhouse. Very, uh, it was a very big deal in Austria when I was uh, cooking in Austria. So uh, cream spinach was a very big uh, uh, German dish. Uh, heavy, yeah. We'll cook the shallots until they get soft and then we'll add some flour which will thicken them. And then we'll add our heavy cream and then uh, we finish it with salt, white pepper, nutmeg. 
uh, always a big addition to cream spinach and uh, we I always uh, use uh, whole nutmeg not the stuff that's been grated already for you we're just going to use it right off that we're going to use the whole seed so we got our butter melted and let's add our shallots okay we're going to let those cook always checking the potatoes it's and uh, we time it well. Uh, timing is everything in cooking. Uh, you don't want anything sitting for too long. If I were to cook these uh, any earlier, everything else would be done and these would be sitting getting soft and soggy. So we're timing it pretty well to where everything comes out at the same time. Uh, the good thing about the cream spinach is it, it, it can sit uh, for a while and, and lose no quality when you reheat it. So we're going to get that out of the way. Two thirds of a cup. Heavy whipping cream will add to that. And the nice thing about cream spinach now is I'll add our um, steamed spinach that I've chopped and that's the finishing touch. We'll mix that all together and we'll season it again with some white pepper and plenty of salt. Always season, always season, always taste as you go. Our finish for this one is the nutmeg, the whole nutmeg. Take a seed and we go over the whole thing. Just calls for an eighth of a teaspoon. Just You just want a hint of the flavor in there. Okay, so there's our nutmeg added. And we put it up, blend it all together. A Little bit more cream. And then this is done. And then we're getting pretty close to, uh, we're getting pretty close to food time. Uh, all we gotta do is make our steak, which cooks for two minutes on each side. Boom, we're done with that. And with the uh, pan juices, we just add cream, our peppercorns, a little beef stock, uh, Worcestershire sauce, soy sauce, tremendous sauce that will pour right over the steak. And it's a little piece of heaven. Vincent Price, thank you for the inspiration for that. Um, steak au poivre our way. Okay. Gilbert K. Chesterton once said, In everybody there is a thing that loves children, fears death, and likes sunlight. And this thing enjoys Charles Dickens. Before I tell you about The Christmas Carol, let me read to you what Charles Dickens himself wrote about this story. I have endeavored in this ghostly little story to raise the ghost of an idea which shall not put my readers out of humor with themselves, with each other, with the season, or with me. And may it haunt their houses pleasantly. Charles Dickens. To begin with, Jacob Marley was dead. There is no doubt about that. You will therefore permit me to repeat emphatically that Marley was as dead as a doornail. Did Scrooge know that he was dead? Of course he did. Ebenezer Scrooge and he had been partners for I don't know how many years. Scrooge never painted out Marley's name, and so there it stood seven years afterwards above the warehouse door. Ebenezer Scrooge? How oh, now? What do you want of me? Much. Who are you? Life, I was your partner, Jacob Marley. Who and what are you? I am the ghost of Christmas past. I am the ghost of Christmas present. I am in the presence of the ghost of Christmas yet to come. Boy, oh boy! Yes, sir? What's today? What, sir? What's today, my fine fellow? Today? By Christmas Day, sir! Scrooge won his word. He did it all and infinitely more. And to Tiny Tim, who did not die, he was a second father. 
Scrooge had no further dealings with ghosts, but it was always said that he knew how to keep Christmas well, if any man alive possessed the knowledge. May it truly be said of us, and all of us. And so, as Tiny Tim observed, God bless us, everyone. We're in the home stretch. All we have to do is cook our steak au poivre. Uh, look at those babies. Tell me that's not a steak. It's not prime, it's a choice. Uh, the grades of meat, prime. Mostly restaurants get prime meat. Uh, Costco will sell prime meat. You're gonna pay through the nose for it. Choice, that's what we've got here. Choice is what, uh, it's a very good grade of meat. Select is what you like your Jewel and Dominic's or, or, or those meats carry. Uh, choice, you can't go wrong with a prime or with a choice filet mignon. So, the key to this dish is we're gonna take a, it's about uh, uh, inch and a half, we're gonna cut that in half, okay, like that. These are nice, boy. Look at that, oh my gosh. Vincent, you knew what you were doing. Like I said, this is a classic French dish and this, uh, this has been served in many places for a long time, okay? So, we've got that. Steak au poivre, at, if we were making normal steak au poivre, we would now take crushed peppercorns and just pound them into there. But we're not gonna do that since we're making a peppercorn sauce. We're gonna take a rolling pin and just take them down to about a half an inch, okay? I mean, look at that. The point of rolling this down is just that it's gonna cook fast. It's gonna cook uh, two minutes on each side. It's called a la minute cooking, and, uh, the, the, uh, and it's big French. I mean, uh, can you see popping steak au poivre out in a restaurant like this with it, with it taking five minutes to cook? I mean, uh, yeah, that's why, uh, that's why these recipes are in restaurants because they are so fast to prepare, you know? And you can see how it took uh, a little while for all our other dishes, but yet those dishes can sit till it's time for the final product, which is our steak. And, uh, couple minutes to cook and uh, and then we'll, from that from the juices uh, that's going to release juices and uh, uh, called fond on the bottom of the pan when we add a liquid to that all that flavor is going to come up into our finished sauce so let's just get these uh, down a little bit roll down a little bit let me get a plate to put those on okay That's noisy. And you'll see here, we've got our green peppercorns. And that's gonna lend our, uh, oh my gosh, they are awesome. You get a, you get a great pepper flavor. And then uh, actually we're gonna finish, we're gonna do our, complete our uh, pepper uh, medley, if you will. We're gonna add, uh, oh, to finish that, we're gonna put watercress lettuce, which is a, has a very peppery taste. So, home stretch, final, final phase of the meal. Steak au poivre, two minutes per side. We make our sauce right in the pan. Butter, add a little olive oil. You don't want the butter to burn. High heat, okay? We're gonna get this up blazing because you want a nice sear on it. Once that meat sears, everything's gonna stay nice and tender inside. And uh, we, we, you kind of have to be uh, uh, conscious of overcooking a piece of meat. Better under than over. You can't reverse it, so uh, we're gonna go under and about two minutes per side is all it's gonna take, so. I got a nice piece of steak here. Salt. Liberally salt and pepper it, okay? Fresh cracked black. I just cracked a big bunch of it before, uh, a big jar of it before we started this meal. I can even look at our potatoes now and see that they're getting a really nice crust on them right now. So here we go. We're almost to where we want to be. It's, 
I want to stress how important it is to have a hot pan. Okay, uh, if you don't have a hot pan, your meat's going to turn gray and you just need a hot pan because it ensures a nice sear on your meat. So there's our steak, all seasoned well. Cast iron pan, boom, we're down. Two minutes. I can even set a timer for all you uh, amateur cooks. By no means am I a professional, but uh, I have a lot of respect for those, uh, those chefs in the steakhouses that can uh, uh, just touch a steak and tell what doneness it is. So I can remember one instance uh, this Christmas, uh, I cooked a prime rib, a $100 prime rib, and I overcooked it. See, that's something that you can't, you can't change. So you take a $100 piece of meat and you overcook it. Kind of made me sick to my stomach. Was it still good? Yeah, it absolutely was good, but it was overcooked. A prime rib should be served nice and uh, uh, rare to medium rare, and uh, mine was just barely pink. So uh, you get through it, you eat it, and you learn. You learn. I've made, uh, you know, I've made shrimp that could out bounce a Super Bowl. I've turned uh, fish into mush. It happens. It happens. It's going to happen in the kitchen. But you know what? Don't give up. I mean. Uh, Keep cooking and, and you only get better. You only get better. So uh, we're at our 20 seconds, 20 seconds till we flip this. Okay, good. We're going to go over. Oh my gosh, look at, you can see how, how the nice sear is on there, okay? Look at that. All right, another two minutes. Two minutes. And that's going to be nice and medium rare. And then from that, um, Pan sauce. We're gonna make a beautiful pan sauce to go over our steak. So, a quick flip of our potatoes here. Getting a nice crust on them. We're getting all the results that we wanted so far. It's gonna be a fine meal, a fine tribute to Mr. Price's treasury of great recipes, okay? And actually, our, uh, our film crew here is gonna be eating with us, so, uh, they're excited about that. All right, we got our pan. We've finished our two minutes or our, our two minutes on each side. Deglaze the pan with some brandy. At this point, you can flambe it. And flambe it, and as a basis for our sauce. Okay. Sweet. Let the bland, let the brandy cook off. Let the alcohol cook off into the pan. Here are the green peppercorns. Not matured black. If these were to be left on the tree, they would turn into black peppercorns, but they're soft. So we're gonna go right into our pan sauce with there, and we're gonna mash them. Okay, they mash, they're soft, they mash real easy. Okay. We're gonna add a little bit of beef stock. Okay. A little bit of soy sauce. A little bit of Worcestershire. We're going to let that boil down a little bit. High heat. To thicken it, I have a little bit of cornstarch and water. Very, very good sauce thickener. I could use roux, which is a butter and flour combination, but uh, for this simple sauce, what we're going to use is uh, uh, cornstarch and you have to put it put it in cold water never add cornstarch to something hot we're gonna add our cornstarch a little bit at a time until it gets nice and thick see how it instantly goes to work look at that how nice is that to this we're going to add some heavy cream to finish it. Look at that. And there's your steak au poivre. Ooh, it smells really good in here. Well, I think Vincent Price might be pleased at what we've done for him today. Um, 
There it is, the treasury of great recipes. Uh, we put our twist on it. We did the cream spinach, the home fries, the steak au pois with a brandy peppercorn sauce, uh, our white chocolate bread pudding with a pumpkin rum raisin sauce garnished with a little chantilly and mint. And uh, in the middle of this one, we have a little watercress. And honey, you came home just in time. <laughs> time that right. All right, let's try a little bite of that. Looks good. Do you want this one? Sure. Okay. <laughs> Yummy. Yeah? Mm -hmm. All right, let's see. Very tender. Like I said, we've tasted along the way. We knew, we knew what we were coming up with. Oh my. Can I try the dessert? Please. She's my biggest uh, critic. Wow, wish you could taste this. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe you will. Um, so here's to a here's to a successful meal. Yeah.